meeting's going to be the week after next on a Thursday. Don't know where yet though. Uh, another, work, another idea that came out of the workshop was to target people on the CCG, ask them what they're doing, what's going on, etc., and make them accountable. Speak to your doctor, ask him what he feels about the CCGs. Uh, go to the local CCG meetings, they are public, or every other one is public. GP Reclaim Our NHS card is a card that's been going round. We're asking you to fill that in and give that to your doctor. <coughs> Ask for a lift of the private companies that the CCG is going to be using in your area. Pick a month to stand outside one of the CCG meetings in costume with banners etc. to get the media interest. And finally, Join your local health watch. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. Well within the five minutes. Just to, just to reiterate the point, they've got lots of these cards at the back of the room. These are these no private provider cards which have been produced by a number of organisations, including the National Pensioners Convention, keep our NHS public. If you can take at least one of them, you can take a few, there's quite a big pile of them. These go on, you, you can ask your GP to put these in the medical records that you don't want referring to a private provider, which is part of the campaign that's going on. The other thing is, before everybody goes, if you've not already, uh, give your, written down your email address and details so we can get in touch with you. Can you do so on the way out? And also, if you've got pens to hand or whatever, can you take Stefan's number down here if you need to contact uh, somebody to find out what's going on in your area because you don't know or you haven't got on some mailing list. His number is 07901 913698. It's on the bottom of these posters. So if you, you can get it off there at the end afterwards. Right, next report next is by... Yeah, that's it. If you've got the, the forms they're filling in, you make sure they come back to that table. Don't walk off the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, okay. And actually, can you give us help taking all the rubbish out when we go as well? That'll look for me. <laughs> uh, right, uh, next report. So we do Stefan first. Stefan, you go give a report on your workshop. You'll have to explain which one it is because I can't remember. Yeah, this was able to set up a local campaign group in your area and facilitated with Claire Riley, and the lead off was Joe Harding, who's a, a Labour Party councillor for Trafford. Um, and in a capacity as organising the Save Trafford General. Um, what, the, what it was decided very early on is to make it a community campaign, so not badge it as a Labour Party campaign or any other political organisation campaign. Uh, they opposed the open market tender, then they found out that it was Central Manchester, was it the Trust that was going to take over, and they said they were going to oppose any further cuts of PFI and privatisation. But there was obviously a fear of, uh, of NHS staff speaking out and when it came to the consultation process when it started and before that basically the actual local trust was lying basically they were just saying that it, it, it wasn't simply a downgrading of the a and &E at all uh, and, and it was just basically a torrent of lies so again it was basically uh, getting as much information out as possible by leaflets and whatever and they were accused a lot of people were accused of scaremongering and whatever because they, because of the trust and, and various different clinicians did want uh, a public awareness of it the most powerful tool they found was actually the local petition they did do an online version that was important but it was actually going around door to door, having public stalls and whatever, and actually that was a much better form of public consultation exercise. Uh, again, weekly um, stories in the local press, and also releasing the actual public documents that they found that were available, which the trust was actually in denial of and wouldn't make a comment of. Um, the petitions were on the counters of the Boots local chemists, so the core group of about half a dozen groups who were periphery of 30 plus and they ended up campaigning, poster delivery, etc., and obviously making, you know, collecting donations. Um, again, July, the official consultation process began, and again, there was lies and refusing to admit the NE was going to close. 
Um, so there was also a talk in the, in, the, in the workshop of the need for a GM level perspective to be made on it. So even though places maybe like in Rochdale or Tameside or North Manchester where there isn't an A&E closures taking place, it was important to actually set up groups and actually explain to people the actual consequences, the ongoing consequences of other A&E units closing um, and, and the centralisation of services. Um, again, there was misinformation in the local press and the headlines saying that there were higher death levels and whatever at Trafford when it, it was all you know, basically untrue and a lot of people thought that the A&E had already closed so again there was an easy account of misinformation uh, and again, um, even if your services aren't being affected in your local area there's a need to actually go out and actually campaign for the improvements of NHS services um, and, um, and again, the emphasis again from the experiences in Wigan that you can't just make, you know, go down to the local town centre or whatever, you've got to go out and branch out to all the districts and outlying areas to actually uh, get people involved and have meetings in these other areas rather than just a central location. Um, again, it was emphasised the need for setting up campaigns that the Greater Manchester County Association will help to provide support and leaflets and whatever and information for people who are wanting to set up groups on an ongoing basis. It was also flagged up that very TUC was going to have a meeting before Christmas and that was cancelled but they will be starting an initiated campaign in the very area. It was also again to make sure that you engage local councillors in health and scrutiny committees as they did in Trafford um, and basically put pressure, public pressure, um, it, it, you know, affected the council's decisions to actually oppose uh, the closures that were taking place. Uh, finally, basically, he, uh, again, the idea of a specific local campaign around closures versus like a generic campaign to defend the NHS, even though the generic campaign is slightly difficult to organise, basically all services will be under pressure, their budgets are under pressure and cuts will be taking place. So again, we need, to, so even if there's not an immediate close, you need to actually make sure not to know what's going on, to contact local health people in the NHS who work for the NHS to try to get information about what's going on because in the end it's our NHS and even though there may be a bit of a curious end and, and, and some positive things might be happening you know there's sure to be negative things so again because the budget cuts are going to affect every hospital we need to have a campaign in all local authorities across the greater Manchester basically. Okay so just reiterate that point anybody who wants to set up a local group in their area need any assistance if we get in touch with Stefan, we will provide funding for rooms, booty, you know, uh, leaflets, and we can help you out with speakers if, you need, if need be.